All right, welcome back to MEA 320 Creative Careers and Artist Management. So uh, like I like to do from time to time, we consider an applied perspective for our topic area, which is, you know, best practices for ascending into a creative career, recognizing the dynamics, you know, those topics we talk about diversity and conflict um, in this section in particular, those can be very theoretical and sort of detached if we don't consider a, um, an applied perspective. So I wanted to uh, return back to the field of artist management and provide a, um, a case study to look at a positive way to approach this idea of diversity and conflict. And you'll remember from last time that conflict is not necessarily, um, you know, there are two sides to it, I suppose, like innovation and the creation of something new typically does come from the confrontation of things that are not the same. Um, they can be complementary or sometimes even opposite. Um, and so there's a positive sort of version of conflict that we want to focus on while we also recognize that conflict is a, um, a natural part of um, the interpersonal dynamics when we have creative people that are, you know, passionate, perhaps sensitive, um, in a sometimes high pressure situation. And so, you know, we've been talking a lot about um, leadership, for example, and best practices. So a, um, a well-functioning and efficient creative team will typically have that balance of you know an open structure that they can play in and demonstrate their their qualities in um meaning that you've got the structure but it's not a micromanagement structure there's also that sort of free play aspect and the ability to um to demonstrate what they can do and so this idea of um delegation of a diversity of skill sets and backgrounds becomes very important to managing that potential for conflict as long as the roles are clear of who's doing what, who's responsible for what, and then the manager can sort of step back and make themselves available but not intrusive. That's that kind of fine balance I wanted to talk about. Um, so looking at artist management will also provide us, you know, in the music business will also provide us this kind of um, example of how an artist manager can provide that structure for interaction between the team members. And then stepping back and ad adopting that sort of laissez-faire or allowing people you know, to do what they do, but still available sort of posture. And so what I wanted to use is the example of an artist showcase. And so that's a, um, usually traditionally a pretty big moment for um, artist managers once they have developed their artist from um, perhaps a sort of level one or level two so a local or regional act into um, a talent and a creative force that is ready to grow into um, a more national um, spotlight the um, artist showcase requires the manager brings together a, a pretty diverse group of uh, professionals for a common goal. Um, it's oftentimes referred to as a record label showcase. That's the, you know, the, um, that name comes from the fact that, you know, prior to the year 2000, getting a major record deal was sort of the, the ultimate goal. And so these showcase events were um, the manager's way to invite a bunch of different label um, a and R representatives to see um, the talent that they had cultivated, uh, but nowadays, uh, you know, the sort of margins or the borders or the definition of you know what a showcase can be used for have become much broader. Um, I have participated as a musician, a backing musician, in a few of these and different things came from them. So artist managers were able to get 
more powerful um, booking agents instead of you know a regional booking agent they would um, use the showcase to bring in other more powerful agents that would you know get international festival dates or national festival dates um, you also I also saw um, an example of the artist I was working for after a showcase uh, started to get um, television you know late night talk show um, opportunities and so you've got agents um, producers for television so multimedia producers in addition to uh, record labels or if your artist is you know looking for a high-powered publisher so it's basically a way it's a vehicle to expand um, the uh, strength and the reach of your um, artist development team that we talked about last time and so the record label showcase we'll just call it that for now but the, we can call it an artist showcase um, tends to be you know it's an event that uh, needs to be planned out in terms of where you're gonna hold it um, the artist the manager will have to um, prepare uh, the invitations list what the actual invitation will look like um, they're going to wine and dine the people who come in. Um, the performance is typically, you know, sh uh, short performance. Um, it's a very controlled environment. It's not open to the public. Um, and so there's, you know, of course, a corresponding budget to all of this. And so you can start to see the scope. Um, it's an event planning exercise for sure. But from our perspective, it's um, useful to see that we have a project so it's the, the showcase is the project it could be a one-off you know one night only or you could replicate this in different cities if you want to do east coast west coast or depending on the genre maybe you have a latin based artist so you want to you know hit miami or um you know gospel or rap you know you might want to hit um you know jackson has mississippi has a long history uh, with gospel or maybe atlanta so you can kind of see, you know, some research, market research will be necessary. Um, and so once again, the, the artist showcase itself, it tends to be an industry only performance that's going to be pitched to um, very specific professionals um, that are usually one or two levels above what you already have. So if you have, um, if you're self-producing and you're your own label and you want to get an indie label or you already have an indie and you're shooting for a major then that's going to indicate who you're actually inviting to this deal. Um, the same thing goes for agents, publishers, TV, film, advertisers, you know, any mix of the above. But this is a very uh, focused sort of strategic um, uh, plan to uh, execute the agreement, you know, to make things happen that the artist and the manager have agreed to from the beginning of um, of their time together, so the beginning of the agreement itself. So, um, you know, the first part of this is to, you know, find the, uh, the, the right time and place, and then your, your guest list as well. So, you know, looking at what else is going on in the industry, um, on a national level, if you are pitching to um, you know national level players, you won't want your date to conflict with um, very important, say, award ceremonies, or um, you know you may do a deeper level of research if you're shooting for a um, a specific label and they have um, one of their main artists going into the studio or doing, you know, a huge concert somewhere that, you know, label executives would need to be in attendance. So a little bit of research to find the right uh, time and place. Um, the, the ones that I remember doing, we had um, one in New York City and one out in L.A. And so you're going to, you know, recognize those as, you know, music business capitals. You could also throw in any of the other ones that I mentioned earlier. Um, and so that's the, the actual place in terms of the city, you know, the geography of the situation, you're going to want to be able to hit that balance of, you know, casting a wide net for, um, um, you know, having several um, potential targets, and, you know, in terms of who's on your guest list within that, that geographical area. 
Um, so it's not too far for them to come. Uh, the showcase, we, you know, we're talking about like a one hour event just after work. So you're catching these people on their way home. So 5.30 to 6.30. Um, you know, you give them 30 minutes to kind of get set um, and to chill out. And, you know, you've got a layout for them in terms of, you know, maybe some swag. Um, I remember the manager we had put out, there was a recent edition of a national magazine and our artist, the artist I was supporting was on the cover. And so that was at every table. And then there was a bag with like, you know, the recent recording and maybe um, some other merchandise. So just like some swag and then open bar and, um, and some food, like a buffet or something. And so they give them 30 minutes to set up. Then we perform for 20 minutes and then 10 minutes at the end to basically work the room. So the manager went around, asked everybody how they're doing and got their feedback after basically using the performance of the artist and, you know, the band as, that sort of um it's a demonstration you know it's like this is what we're bringing to the table and so usually a live performance of a of a well-oiled you know um music show has a lot of energy and excitement to it and so you want to generate that along with this sort of you know comfortable atmosphere um you know serving some drinks and having good food out gets them in the mood to do business is that's the general <laughs> sort of idea there. Um, and so, yes, yeah, centrally located venue, usually in a city center center to once I, once again, get these folks um, after they're done with their work day, but on their way home to stop in want to make sure you've got, um, you know, everything is basically little effort for them as possible and the least amount of hassle. So I'm sure you've got good parking and um, like I said about the food and beverage. So when you're looking at the, you know, the people that are invited and in, involved in this process, so you've got a graphic de design element here and you also have a, a um, you know, good strategy would be to have a redundancy of invitation. So you want to hit, you know, about two weeks out, um, maybe with an email notification um and then because that usually you get maybe 50 percent or less of people actually either open the email or make a note of it you want to have a physical invite that um you know so a postcard or something like that that is sent out to reaffirm and remind a much you know much closer so like within a week to um you know five days to a week so that they can um, recognize this is happening and you know this is like just the the first level of the invitation process but um, and so you want to have the design purchase RSVP you know budget the postage and the printing and everything so you can kind of see some of the initial workflows that are involved here um, and so after that you're going to go ahead and meter those and mail them out um, and then um, make sure that you do the follow-up then in terms of the food and beverage so uh, you know the, the image on the top is like the fully deluxe situation here where you've got you know like a, a ten thousand dollar wedding sort of layout you know with flowers and it's catered event um, you got the stage in the background so everything is like really really nice um, and then you've got two other options down below one with you know some uh, shrimp and um, you know crawfish and, and some steak and then all the way to the right you've got kind of the budget set up where it's just like some cold cut cold cuts and mustard and, and bread and kind of DIY sandwich scene so of course all of the different um, you know setups are going to have a different budget but this should sort of um, you know so the sky is obviously obviously the limit if you do have um, a significant budget um, you know, it, w it will obviously look a little bit different. Um, but having a sort of a color code or template that goes along with either this like magazine cover story or the cover art on a, a recent release or artist poster, like whatever their image is, and there's a color palette and font that goes along with all of that, um, you know, in that example, the image on the top, you see those sort of deep purples, light blues, and then you've got some of the, the flower colors in there as well. 
that all belongs to a, a color family. And so having that orchestrated um, is pretty interesting. So, um, you know, in terms of estimating costs for, so having, you know, the open bar, for example, usually $1,500 an hour for 100 people um, at like $15 a head, um, you know, for food, and this is for the middle sort of example where you've got the nicer food, but it's serve yourself and not a fully catered setup. You know, another fifteen dollars a head is is good. Um, and then when you're looking at the venue here, I've got a few different venue types. So there's a jazz club top left, and then you've got like a fifteen hundred seat, you know, um, theater sort of like the um, the one here in town uh, downtown. Um, that's a theater from the nineteen twenties. Um, you know, with an industry party, you're not going to have 1,500 people. You may only have 50 people. And so the larger image that I have here shows a, um, a much smaller room, even though the photo is bigger. And it's much more intimate. You've got, you know, um, tables as opposed to, you know, theatrical seating so that you can serve people. Um, this is what I remember from, um, from the, the artist showcase events that I uh, was, um, you know, that I was able to experience. Um, and so when you're looking at the, you know, the performance and promotion side, you know, what sort of, uh, venue sound and lights, uh, are those available or are you paying extra? So is it a music venue or just a, a venue with a stage and you've got to bring in your own sound and lights. And so now you've got the extra personnel of, um, you know, audio, um, basically stage light and sound production company that you're looking at. Um, if you, you know, you don't want a floor level performance. And so you may have the extra line item of bringing in a stage. And so this can become, um, an unnecessary complication. If you have the perfect venue that is sort of a listening room, it's intimate, it's got that upscale feeling, but, um, it does have its own, um, sound and, uh, sound system and uh, you can create the ambient sort of lighting mood that you want to talked about the, um, you know, creating the individual press packs, um, as opposed to like a stage banner. So you want to make it feel very individualized and not like they're coming necessarily to a concert. This is a, um, an exclusive industry only sort of invite. Um, and so who's going to actually put it, be putting together those press packs and collecting and making the purchase of, you know, the extra um, magazines or um, CDs or what kind of, you know, and this is, those are examples from the 90s, but maybe um, you would have uh, different sorts of um, swag that would be very specific to your artist that, um, you know, is going to be a matter of designating and delegating a, a person or a couple of people to basically put that together. Um, even if the house has its own in-house sound, you'll want to budget for a sound operator. So someone to operate the board and get set up um, for this specific kind of a show. And so, you know, minimum a hundred dollars an hour as a rule of thumb, um, probably a three hour um, event by the time, set up, tear down, uh, sound check, and all the rest takes place. Um, and so there are some other, other budget line items. Um, if the artist is flying in, um, you want to have equipment for them, of course. Oftentimes, artists will fly, you know, drummer will have their sticks. Um, and then, you know, the artist may have a guitar, but you're going to need amplifiers, the actual drum kit, and, um, you know, the rest. So having a publicist, um, maybe, maybe not all depending on if you have the publicist that is looking at just industry professionals, as opposed to sort of a, uh, a larger picture, um, of, you know, inviting people that are not as not specific just to the industry. Um, you know, if you're doing this on a level of, you know, say Hattiesburg or a mid-level, even up to a mid-level city, something as big as, say, you know, Indianapolis or Cincinnati or something like that, you know, you may want to structure this as a, um, you know, as an industry-only night that is for people that work in the clubs. So if you want to, um, you know, invite bartenders, sound crew personnel, um, service uh, professionals from all of the music clubs within a certain radius, 
you know, that's a really, really great way to, um, to, to expand the touring reach of, of your, um, of your artist. And then of course you could go a little bit lower, you know, it doesn't have to be as, um, you know, exclusive in terms of, you know, the nicest everything. Um, but just the fact of giving these people something and recognizing their value to the music business, I think would create a lot of positive energy for an artist that wanted to get established in their area. Um, so finally you get down to, okay, so we've got this idea of how much everything costs. So who in your area, um, is good with crunching numbers and working Excel and can collect all of this and date the bills, um, and invoices that have to be paid in what order and, um, you know, providing a statement to the manager so that the manager can have an idea of, is this something that we can afford or not? And so I wanted to share this um, idea of an artist showcase with you because it does give a good example of the different, um, of, you know, it's one discrete sort of strategy that a manager will use um, in order to get a specific outcome. And that outcome is variable, right? So depending on what artists you have in their particular um, growth in the business, like I said at the beginning, you may want to have a better agent to get better gigs. You may want to have a better label to get, you know, more label support through distribution or, you know, once again on the live side or their specific ties to the music publishing side. Um, and so it all depends on what your strategy is, but the showcase is a really great targeted way to do this. Um, but even for a one night for, you know, a 20 minute performance, you can see that the manager is uh, looking at a lot of different personnel between, you know, identifying the, the venue, um, working with the venue, uh, getting the graphic design laid out for um, the invitations, um, designating someone to, you know, approve the or, or create the artwork and then get them actually printed out and do a digital version that's distributed to um, the guest list and then someone to actually identify uh, and verify the contact information for all of the guests, whether it's, you know, high level agents or um, maybe music publicists. Those are worth their weight in gold. Um, so you're going to want certain professionals from the area. Um, and that's going to be a separate sort of delegated task. And then you get down to sound and lights and, um, you know, making sure that the musicians travel arrangements are, are taken care of so that they are, you know, everybody's available if they have to, you know, fly in from tour or from home or whatever it is, where are they going to be staying that night? Um, is this going to be a paid performance for them? Um, et cetera, putting together the swag packs, uh, making sure the back line is there. And so you can see this can easily, um, get into the $10,000 range if you're doing it, um, you know, at a certain level in a city center, but it doesn't always have to be that way. You could do for much, much less. Um, you know, if you adopted a DIY in a smaller area, um, like we are in and wanted to create, you know, debut an artist, for example, and bring people in to, um, to see that, that we're in a position to say, yeah, I've got a venue, come play at my club. You basically give them one, you know, relaxing evening to of some drinks and um, and some food that you provide and a, and a free show to them, um, and everybody can kind of chill out. I think that this, uh, if you've got a good show to deliver, it's a really great way to um, to generate community. So, um, you know, back to our introductory point here to wrap it up is that you've got you know. Um, a lot of people potentially involved and if you don't you know structure everybody's expectations in terms of okay you're in charge of doing the graphic design you're in charge of ensuring that the artists are taken care of all the way down the list then the manager stands to have a high chance a pretty significant chance of conflict as the date gets closer and people don't know what they're supposed to be doing on the same side if the manager is constantly in people's business and micromanaging and being like you know, I'll just do the graphics myself because this font is not exactly right and just constantly over their shoulder. Um, then you're also going to have that sort of um, deflation of sort of, you know, the creative passion. And so there's that balance between structure and, um, and you know, freedom, I guess you should say, um, that allows for 
uh, creative teams to to cooperate effectively. And as long as everybody has a common goal, and um, you know everybody who's involved in this, of course, should not be overlooked. Um, and let the artist manager take credit for their work, as we as we've mentioned uh, in recent presentations. But they should all be invited to enjoy in this, um, you know, this kind of festive atmosphere with short show, but um, it's very highly structured and uh, usually a lot of fun. Okay, let me know if you've got any questions and uh, we will talk soon.